Jiggy Cat On a damn feeling spree This is not good so And you can't mimic my energy 100 round drum And me hanging like a centipede Yo, what's up everyone? It's me Nagato and welcome back to my channel. As most of you guys know, I've been going through some personal issues and as well, I've just been away from YouTube due to me being in college full time. And since I take academics pretty seriously, I always like to, you know, pour all of my energy and you need to know my time into my schooling. But with that being said, I have some free time today and I decided why not? Let me go ahead and tap back into the PlayStation Vita scene. I had to dust this bad boy off. I haven't <laughs> played any games in so long, but I wanted to see what are some cool new homebrew out right now? I know the GTA scene and there was like a crazy taxi homebrew that I really need to get into as well. But for today, we're going to be talking about a homebrew application that I've been dying for to have on a Vita, which is called Homebrew Browser. And right here, if I tilt to my Vita to the screen, this is how the UI application looks like. Today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys on how to set this up. It's pretty simple. If you know how to basically install a VBK, then you're good to go. However, this Homebrew application allows the end user to download any homebrew application from the CPBS database store as well as the, let me check real quick. If I go into DB options, yeah. So if you see here, they have the Vita database and the CPBS database where you can download all of your latest homebrew applications. So stuff like Vita Shell, um, homebrew app games, anything of that nature. And one cool thing about this, the games actually download with any issue. I know I did release a video back when I very first started YouTube, like around in 2019 or 2020, where they did have a homebrew application app for the Vita, but it always crashed and it had multiple issues. Sometimes the games or, you know, homebrew didn't download. However, this works totally fine. I've tested this out on my other PS Vitas. One is behind me right now, but I tested this out on my Japanese 2000 model, as well as some of my PSTV models. Well, with all of that getting out the way, let's go ahead, go back onto my PC right here. I'm gonna show you guys on how to get this set up, but let's get started. Alrighty everyone, so now we're back on to our PCs and now I'm going to teach you guys on how to get this homebrew application onto your PlayStation Vita or your PS TV. I do apologize in advance if there was any echo in the original portion of the intro. I'm testing out some new things with my microphone, so yeah. But with that being getting out the way, I'm going to have this in the link in the description down below. This is the official GitHub where you can check out all of the releases to Better Homebrew Browser for the Vita. We'll be using the latest version, which actually uh, dropped out an hour ago. So version 0.5 beta. But what I'm going to do here before I show you guys on how to actually install it, we're going to go to the Vita Homebrew Browser, the main page on GitHub. And I'm just going to, you know, run down some features. I'm not going to read everything since you can do that on your time. And I'm trying to make this quite a quick video so it states here that it is the second ever app to use the sony playstation application framework or paaf essentially what that means if the best example i could give you if you ever downloaded a playstation title from the actual psn store on the vita you notice in the right hand corner there will be a download that is coming from home or excuse me not homes but playstation networks cdn so that's what this app actually does. It uses the PlayStation application framework. So instead of it downloading within the actual homebrew itself, you will see a notification of this downloading. And probably once I edit this out, I will have like a little um, illustration on a screen, but that's something really cool that I like about this homebrew browser itself. Um, some other features, it states that it's blazing fast. And for my um, test, I never had really any issues. All of the downloads seem, you know, to download pretty fast. Um, you, you know, considering if you're using Wi-Fi or Ethernet, if you got the PSTV. So, I mean, for that, you know, statement it seems pretty true in itself for me testing. Um, it also has background downloading, meaning that if you're trying to use other applications or you're on the live area, this can, you know, download in the background, which is always a great feature. It can also download from the two databases, as I stated in the intro, from VitaDB as well as CBPSDB. And some other things I'm trying to just read here really quick. 
it can run inside alongside apps meaning that like instead of you know you have other app applications open you don't have to close down the actual vita app for this to still download so all cool things those are just some major features there is a downside thing background downloads will be terminated without warning when you open an enlarged memory mode game so games i think like gravity rush for example or any like triple a title for the vita um that's just one major downside but i'm not too really sure many people when they download their homebrew applications from this app will they be using you know other applications for the most part so i really don't think that's a big issue so this is the open beta as well so if this crashes you know it's not like in a full official release but with that being all out the way in terms of what's there to be expected for this application i'm going to show you guys on how to download it so all we got to do here is go to releases go ahead as of this video if there's like a new version download that latest one unless it states here if it has like major implications but what i'm going to do is download the brado homebrew browser.vbk it should not take long at all it's literally 430 kilobytes unless you got you know dial up or something but with that being right now what i'm going to do is go to my downloads folder or wherever your downloads are located on your pc and we're going to drag this out to our desktop so what we need to do now is head back onto the PlayStation Vita, start up Vita Shell, get our FTP running, or if you're gonna be transferring over with a USB cable, that is both fine. But for this tutorial, I'll be using my trusty Fazola FTP client. But with that being all out the way, let's go back on the Vita and get this set up. Alrighty, so right now I am on my PlayStation Vita, as you can see here, let me just turn it on right now and yeah right now i'm in the live area what we need to do to make this simple is to verify that we have our wi-fi settings on so let me go ahead and turn my wi-fi since i am transferring this with a uh, fazla ftp client and then what i'm going to do now is open up vita shell so i'm already assuming that you have a modded device of some sort like if you're using 3.6 the uh, hancock enzo or whatever um you know exploit you're using for your playstation vita or pstv make sure you have that you know set up but what we're going to do is launch our homebrew application we're going to go and hit start on our vita we're going to make sure that depending if you want to transfer your files like i am via a internet connection make sure you select ftp for file transfer protocol if you're going to be transferring this data with a usb cable make sure your usb cable is plugged into one side of your playstation vita and then to your desktop that you're using but in this case i'm going to be using ftp so make sure that's selected now what you want to do is hit circle to back out from your vita and then you want to hit select and it will prompt up your PlayStation Vita's IP address. So make sure you leave your Vita on standby right now. And then we're gonna go and switch to our PC, open up our FTP application of our choice. You can use like WinSCP or FileZilla, but in this case, I'm be using FileZilla FTP client. But yeah, I'll meet you guys for that process back onto the PC. Alrighty, as of right now, what we're gonna do is go and launch our FTP client of choice. Make sure once again that your PlayStation Vita has its FTP server on and make sure you have your network Wi-Fi on the device. If you're gonna be transferring over a USB cable, just make sure that your USB is uh, cable is plugged into your PC as well as the Vita. But for this case, I'm just gonna be doing a network route since this is only 400, yeah, 30 kilobytes. So right now I'm gonna open up FTP right now for Filezilla client and what we're going to do is I'm not going to update right now but what we're going to do in the host section right here we're going to type in our device's IP address so my case it is 10 0 81 and then the port will always be 1337 for PlayStation TVs and Vitas I know for like PlayStation 4 and something it's different like 9020 but anyways once you get your Vita to display on the remote side pane on files of the FTP client what you're going to do is transfer this to the UX0 partition I usually transfer or I have a pre-made folder where I keep my VPKs at or you could just transfer it to the root of it but just to make my um, you know selection clean you could create a VPK folder if you don't have one just by hitting VPK since I already have the folder here that's why it took me to my other directories but what i'm gonna do is go to my desktop here and drag and drop my um vpk here so it shouldn't take too long i'm just waiting for it to finish it says 100 so 
voila you probably heard my um pc make a loud noise and it says all files has transferred successfully so once you get that you can see here um from the date and time if i make this a little bit bigger that it's on the actual memory card or in this case my sd to vita for my playstation so what we're going to do is go back onto the vita install the vbk just like normal and i'm going to show you guys on how easy it really is to just download homebrew applications from the device itself and not needing a computer so let's go Alrighty, so it's now finished. What I'm gonna do is come back to the home screen. So we're just gonna hit the home button on our PlayStation Vita. Let me scroll down to my applications and, oh, not the NBA 2K section, but let me go to Homebrew Browser. Let me click on that. And here is the Homebrew application. Looks very similar to the PSN store, but all we gotta do is make sure you have your Wi-Fi on for this initial process since it needs to retrieve data from the database server. So it has kind of like a list per se to have all the applications and updates done. So let me just launch that right now. And it will take a little while for its initial setup. So let me go to apps. And now that's just what I was saying. It will be downloading the index and parsing the data from the servers itself and then to the client, which is your Vita device. So right now it's downloading all the store icons and it's extracting data. So it may take a little while because I know it's a lot of homebrew applications. It's probably in the hundreds right now. So it will take a little while. What I'll do here is just for simplicity sake is to cut the video and then once it's um done, I'll showcase on how this actual application looks for the end user. Alrighty, so as you can see here, all of the data has now been initialized onto our PlayStation Vita. And the first thing you probably can see right off the back that this looks like the official PlayStation Network store for the PS Vita. Um, simply, if I just wanna download any application that I want to, so let's just choose the first one here, uh, Rocket Cars by Vita. I'm just gonna download this right now. And as you can see here, this is what I was talking about via for the notification. It actually downloads to the queue like a regular PSN app. And if I go right here, you can see that Rocket Cars will be downloading. Just to kind of give a more of an overview of how the application looks inside. If I go and hit on the settings, you can see like the source information. So if you want to change your database, depending if you want to use the Vita DB or the CPBS database, you can. Um, there's also some database options. So I guess that is just selecting whichever database you want to use. And then other, this is just info about the app. So credits from the development team itself. So shouts out to them. Um, just some upcoming fixes and features. Um, that is going to be implemented since this is a beta. So this is really cool, which is coming up. So probably maybe in the next few weeks or months or so, um, they will be having these, um, you know, iterations within the homebrew application. So I may cover it again on my YouTube channel, but you can see here, those are the fixes. If I go back out from here, there's something called terminate BGDL. I'm not too sure actually what that means. I'm not too sure if it will close out the app or something. So if you guys know what it actually means, let me know in the comment section down below and I will actually make that a pin comment and add you in um, and heart it and stuff. But yeah, let me go into download index right here. And it's actually parsing data once again. So I'm not too sure if they actually pushed some type of revision um, within this while I am recording. So this is kind of, you know, new. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. And let me just check out the actual download to the app too as well. So it's 36% done. I'm not too sure how big this application is or if it actually details within the notification pane for this but with that being all out the way oh actually it does so let me see if it tells um the actual megabytes or you know the file size of this so it doesn't maybe that would be a cool little thing they can add so yeah right now what i'm going to do is just let this finish downloading as you can see there was a initial bug for that but once again it's a beta so this is my first time actually running into that issue but what i'm going to do is cut the video here and once this is done, we're gonna test the homebrew application I've downloaded. And then, yeah, we're gonna run along with that. Alrighty, so as of right now, if I jump back into my notification section here, you can see that install Rocket Vita has been 
initially successful. So if I go here into the live area, I can just launch the homebrew application app. I'm not even too sure if this homebrew application fully works in terms of the homebrew itself. So this is my first time trying it. However, this was just the first application showcasing that it can download from you know the actual database store to the Vita itself. So right now, um, I'm waiting at the Unity screen. Hopefully it does something in the next five to 10, or not five to 10 minutes, but five to 10 seconds. Maybe it's just, you know, initializing since this is the first time I am launching this game. But okay, so there I go right now. So here is Vita Cars. Um, I've never actually played this before. So it's like a off, not a, I want to say off brand of Rocket League, but this is Rocket League for the Vita. I'm not even too sure because the, the actual cable or the actual controls are a little bit different, I guess. Maybe, okay, so it's R to drive. So I'm in this yellow 350Z. I may test uh, out this homebrew application. There is some like frame dropping, but I'm not too sure. Yeah, I'm not even overclocked. So let me see if I actually overclock if I'm getting a full 30 FPS. So let me turn this on right now. So yeah, I'm getting a solid 30 frames per second now by overclocking. But yeah, this is essentially how to download um, Homebrew to your PlayStation Vita device directly utilizing the Homebrew browser. So with that being out the way, if you guys have any issues on installing this or have any questions, please let me know in the comment section down below. But my name is Nagato. It's good to be back on YouTube for today. Um, but with all of that being out the way, I'll see you guys in the next video and peace. Hey everyone, it's me Nagato's Adventure. Hope you guys did enjoy today's video. With that being out the way as well, I highly do recommend that y'all guys go ahead and follow my social media so you never miss any of the latest hacking guides and tutorials on my channel by subscribing to me and hitting that notification button as well. It's another method on how you will know when I drop my latest content, whether it be for the Vita, PS4, PS3, and such and so forth. As well, if you want to be in the mix of things and you want to join my official community, you can join via the link right now showcased on the screen and join my discord that way and if you do want to support my channel in any shape or form you can become a patron i will have a card right now but with all of that getting out the way hope you guys really did enjoy this video and i'll see y'all next time peace